Many of you have watched my other videos such as the zoom in, zoom out keys, the plus minus button, and the view key, and how you can use that to be more efficient with your units. So I have done a number of videos on the different buttons and what you can do with them. So today's video is going to be a continuation of that series and we are going to focus on the mark button. The mark button will allow you to save waypoints and it is going to allow you to take a screenshot. Knowing and understanding your Humminbird unit is the best way to make the most efficient use of the unit. And I will certainly try to give you some advanced tips in there as well, so that those of you that are already familiar with it will be able to take it to another level. As always, if you like the video, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. If you enjoy this mark key video, please watch the videos available on my channel for the keys you've seen in the previous the slides. mark button on my Humminbird Helix is right here. You can see it located at the tip of my blue pointer. And this is a pretty straightforward key as it is used to mark a waypoint. But if you also press and hold the mark, button, it will take a screenshot, but more about that later. In the simplest terms, the manual says, mark a waypoint at the boat position, press the mark key once. To mark a waypoint at the cursor position, press the mark key twice. This video is being taken while I'm in my garage, but the GPS is locked on and therefore I have the boat icon. When I press the mark button once, you can see that there is a yellow message that is highlighted at the top here, and that is showing that the waypoint has saved. And it is extremely important that you get a verification that the waypoint has been saved. Another way to verify that the waypoint has been saved is that you should see a icon representing the waypoint that will appear at the location and that gives you a double verification that the waypoint has been saved because it has been saved by the waypoint icon and plus the yellow message at the top. Deleting waypoints is also a very valuable skill. So let's say I accidentally mark that waypoint and I know there's no perch right here. So I am going to take my menu button and I'm going to press it and there's my 5312. I'm going to write cursor and I'm going to go from edit down to delete. And yes, I want to delete that waypoint. And there it is. So now I can just exit out of everything and I'm back to my original screen. In summary, the Helix manual reads that if you press the mark key, it will save a waypoint at the boat position. If the cursor is active, press the mark key twice to save waypoint at the cursor position. I needed to use a cursor to find this spot on the lake because I am in the garage. The mark button has been mentioned in several of my previous videos on waypoints. This video has been designed to clarify what the mark button's features are and help new users be more comfortable saving waypoints. I have placed my cursor in a popular location on Lake Erie and this is on a point and I want to show you how to mark a waypoint using the cursor. Since there is a cursor involved, I cannot just hit the mark key once. So as you see here, that when I've hit the mark key, it says waypoint. If I write cursor, you'll see the yellow line at the top has indicated that the waypoint has been saved. The yellow message and the waypoint icon circled here shows that the waypoint has been double verified saved. Since the waypoint is still highlighted, I am going to now hit my menu button and I'll hit that once. And you can see that it's now referring to that waypoint 5304 right there. I'm gonna right cursor it. And because I'm just making this up here, I don't want that waypoint, even though it looks like a potentially good spot. I'm going to delete that. Yes, I need to delete it. And you can see now that that waypoint is gone. 
Now, let's see what happens if I hit the mark button twice. Once, twice. And there you can see that the waypoint has now been created. It is in the same spot. It is now 5305, even though I have deleted the other one. It just goes in the next sequential number for the waypoint. Just in case you missed it the first time that I did mark mark, I've deleted that 5305 and I've been playing with it a little bit in between takes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit mark mark again. And this time I want you to pay attention up here and make sure that you get that yellow message that says the waypoint has been saved. I know sometimes people, you know, hit the mark button and they think that they've saved the waypoint and they have nothing there. And you know, I'll get asked that question. Well, I, you know, I marked the waypoint, but it's not showing up. What's wrong? And, you know, sometimes you just got to make sure that you get that message that the waypoint has been saved, whether you hit mark, mark, or you hit mark and then follow the cursor prompts as I did in the first example. So let's hit mark, mark again, and let's pay attention up here. Mark, mark, and there's waypoint 5307 created, and there it is. Just in case some of you do not know, let's say that I want to mark this as a waypoint. The real-time sonar is right over here. This is real, this is history, but let's say I wanted to mark this point. If I take and move my cursor over to the point, again, even though it's already scrolled on by, I can also hit, and let's go back to the mark, mark, and you can see that I've created waypoint 5308. And now I have that marked as well. So you are able to mark waypoints in various screens. It's not just your chart. And I'll give you another example here. I will do one on down imaging and maybe one on side imaging, just so you get the idea. Similarly, here's another example of a hump here. So if I take my cursor control key and I take the cursor and this is a down imaging shot and I wanna get the top of that point because it's obviously an excellent piece of structure. And if I hit, and instead of hitting mark mark like I did the last time on 2D sonar, I'm gonna hit mark once and it says waypoint up here. I write cursor and you can see that it created it. So there, there's a couple of different ways to save the waypoint, but the bottom line is once again, make sure you get that message that clearly indicates that the waypoint has been saved. Here's one final example of saving a waypoint. This time we are in a side imaging view and you can see that I hit the cursor control key and as soon as I hit that it froze the screen and right down here there is an obvious piece of structure you can see it's very tall high shadows and this is got some kind of cylinder on top here and I want to mark that. So now I'm going to take, even though the position of the boat is up here and, and is well gone by, again, this is a historical perspective here. The real time for site imaging is up here. And let's bring this cursor over. And let's say I want to mark the side of this wall. So there's the edge of the wall. And I could mark a waypoint here. I might choose to mark several waypoints around the perimeter of it so that I know where it is. And I might want to put a mark on this cylinder because it's obviously throwing a shadow. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to mark the back side. And again, I'm going to just hit mark, mark. There's the message up at the top in yellow that the waypoint has been created. So I know that I have been successful. I mentioned earlier that if you press and hold the mark button, it will take a screenshot. So in this case, I am maybe wanting to share this waypoint, even though it's just an arbitrary made up waypoint. So let's see what happens when I press and hold the mark button. So I'm going to press and hold it. And provided you have an SD card in there, you notice that you got a message that there was a screenshot saved. And it's as simple as that to save a screenshot. Since the purpose of this video is to focus on how to use the mark button and 
you know, how to make waypoints, how to mark screenshots. I am going to limit it to that. I will do another video at another time of how to take that screenshot and be able to transfer it to a computer and to your phone so that it is a shareable resource and you can get rid of those ugly water spots because the screenshot is not going to have them. So a lot of the images that I share have been taken from a screenshot that was created by holding down the mark button to get that screenshot that I wanted. Here's a sneak peek for those of you that are curious about how to retrieve the screenshot. If I press and hold the view button, I am going to get this message come up and I'm going to go down to system and I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to go to snapshot and recording view and you can see over here that there is the screenshot that I took earlier. You can tell here that this really looks kind of blurry and it looks like a lousy screenshot but what I'm going to do is right now this is the screenshot that's highlighted you can see it's got the gold box around it and this one has no highlighted box so I'm going to hit the down cursor arrow on the cursor control key and now it is highlighted and this right cursor arrow is highlighted so now I hit the right cursor control key and there it is there's my screenshot and you can check it over and see the detail that you want and as I said I will give you more details on how to get that information from the SD card so that it is in a shareable format in another video. If you want to get the best possible pictures to share, make sure you have an SD card in your unit. And here's the bed here that we were looking at. And there's the fish, the white spot. You can see a little log here. And all I need to do is press and hold the mark button. And it's going to say successfully saved. And now that is onto my SD card, which I can take to my computer. And then from there, I can get the best possible image. I always like to add some advanced tips in my videos for those that are beyond the basics and here's one for you today. So if you like taking a lot of screenshots and you want to get a waypoint at the same time, then if you go under the accessories tab and you go down to screen snapshot waypoint and you're going to right cursor that and now it is on. If the screen snapshot is on, a waypoint will also be saved at the boat or cursor location when you take a screen snapshot. The waypoint is saved with the same file name as the screen snapshot. I am currently sitting in my garage right now and for some of you that have access to your boat and right now it's cold, it's freezing rain outside, it is not a nice day by any stretch of the imagination. I have my garage door closed and if you are patient, and I gen generally give it several minutes, but you'll notice that any of the GPS functions that I can get the unit to lock on even though I'm in the garage with the door closed. So um, sometimes I've even had it in my basement where it will lock on as if I'm near a window. So uh, sometimes you can do it simply in the garage or even in the house. Uh, you just have to be patient sometimes to wait until the GPS locked on so that you can do some of those functions that you are playing with the unit to, let's say, manually enter waypoint, etc., things like that. I'm in the garage and I'm waiting for the GPS to lock on. And you can see right now it has no GPS position fix. So that generally takes several minutes. And lo and behold, there you go. It was only a couple of minutes and it changed as I was uh, going. So that's great. That's very helpful. Here's my Helix 5 unit, which I use for ice fishing. And it is locked onto the GPS satellites, even though it is in my basement. I am near a window, so it takes a few minutes to lock on, but it locked on. This Helix 5 is currently operating in the ice fishing mode. 
you can see the icon here that represents my current location. And I would expect that when I hit the mark button that it would save immediately. And it doesn't. So as I mentioned earlier, make sure that you confirm that you get the message which is now waypoint created up here because I pressed the mark button twice. Alternatively, I could have hit the mark button, then gone down to waypoint right cursored, and you can see that it saved that way as well. So there are options. Once again, make sure that you get some kind of verification that your waypoint is saved. I can see the waypoint under here. It's labeled. I can see it's hard for you to see, but there is the yellow icon under there and there's the waypoint name and I also got the message so I know for sure that the waypoint has been saved. If I just trusted that the mark button in this particular case was going to do it, it would not have saved the waypoint. So always, always, always check for some kind of verification that your waypoint is there. Those of you that are familiar with my other waypoint videos, you will know that I have a preference for making some changes in my settings. So let's go to my waypoint settings, which is under the nav tab, by the way. And I click on that and you can see that I have already changed the default icon for perch because the last couple of trips that I was out, I was fishing perch. So that is the default icon that you saw in the picture of the waypoint that I marked on the point. I quite often change the default waypoint icon to whatever if I'm looking for rocks or brush piles I'll change it to something accordingly but more often than not I like to change the new waypoint icon to select and that forces me to choose the icon that I am going to use to save and therefore I am always going to have to hit the mark button and then I'm going to have to go into the waypoint and save it again to make sure I get that yellow message across that it has been saved. So it's, it's another step in the process but to me it's well worth it and I invite you to check out some of my other videos to go into more detail on that. After selecting the icon, scroll down to the save indicated by the arrow and right cursor. The Lake Master chip with the color highlighting is a very effective means of showing the underwater point here. And I've got the color highlight here from 5 to 15 feet. And you can very clearly see how this point jets out with the color highlighting available with the Lake Master chip and Humminbird units. By moving my cursor around with the cursor control key or zooming in and out, I can find a lot of different potential areas to fish. And just by hitting that minus button here, you see I zoomed it out. You can see that this underwater point is, you know, the most promising looking spot in this area. I mean, you have a little bit of a secondary point here, but this is more of a primary point here. So when you are having some downtime and idle time and you're just playing with your unit and you want to look around for potential new spots and mark them on the map that's a great place to practice and get familiar with marking waypoints and being able to delete waypoints is just as important because a lot of times those waypoints that you mark will not produce but it's easier to go and check them when you've got a waypoint marked and you know, indicate that that's an area that has potential. Zooming out further gives you a broader pr perspective of what is in the area. And once again, you can see with this Lake Master chip that this is, you know, a, a very good point in the area. Obviously, I have another big point here. And points, not all points are great producers but uh, points do produce fish there's no question about that so i hope you've learned a little bit more about how to use the mark button and for those of you that had trouble marking waypoints hopefully that eliminates that and as always if you find the video enjoyable or helpful a like share subscribe is always very much appreciated take care and bye for now